Hello and welcome to MIP TV and with me as always is Bob Cook for TA Made Simple. And today Bob is going to uh, touch on the subject which a lot of people ask about and that is what are the similarities and differences, so it's a compare and contrast to some extent, between the work of Sigmund Freud in the id, ego and the superego and the work of Eric Byrne which is parent, adult and child. So, mm. so where do we start Bob? Let's start with Eric Byrne's obsession with Sigmund Freud. So Eric Byrne uh, was a psychiatrist. Uh, he died in 1970, and he really was a creative transaction analysis in 1960. So 10 years um, before he died. Um, uh, but before that, he uh, studied uh, Freudian ideas for, for at least 20 years. And his two major analysts were Freudian analysts, Eric Erickson and Paul Fadern. And right up to about 1947, early 1950s, his whole thinking was around Freud. Uh, and then he, in later, about 10 years later, he started to develop a, uh, uh, his ideas around uh, parent, adult, child and transactional analysis, which would be basically uh, very different from Freud's ideas. And I, I think he rebelled in those 10 years, which in 1945 and 1957, against the idea of psychoanalysis and developed transaction analysis as, a, as in his ideas of um, getting cured quicker by strengthening the adult ego state. Yeah, so that, that's the good starting point, isn't it? Tra traditionally, and we're talking about historically here, you mm -hmm. know, psychoanalysis would have, would have been a long-term kind yeah. of engagement, wouldn't it? Where you would have, I don't know, years maybe. But... Yeah. Yeah, 10 at least 10 years wow yeah so so the, there's a big difference between 10 years seeing a therapist and maybe a very short duration i know you've talked many times bob about burn really being the original cbt therapist because yes. he used the model um a lot he pointed to the model and he, i think he said in one book that unless you went to the board two or three times you really weren't being a ta therapist correct. in those correct. days correct and he very much went against the ideas of a long-term psychoanalysis. And he wanted to cure people in two or three sessions. Um, he, he said famously in one of his books. Uh, but as TA developed into the neurotic population, uh, he might be with a TA therapist six months, maybe to nine months. But it's very much about strengthening adult ego state, knowing when you're a parent, knowing when you're a child. Well, Freudian ideas are very different as I said, much longer. But one of the really big differences is this. I don't really want to clear this up because people often come on my course and say, oh yeah, Eric Byrne and Freud's ideas are very similar. PAC and the, uh, the model of Freud, which is ego, id, and superego, and starts to trot that out. Well, let's just put this straight on camera. Right? Yeah. That is, in 1988, when Freud started to talk about his model of uh, id, yeah, which is the rampant drives, superego, moral authority, and ego being in the here and now. He was talking about a model of the unconscious. Yes. Eric Byrne, 70 years later, in his ideas of parent, adult, and child, was a model of the personality. Uh -huh. And they're two different things. So, Eric, so, for example, Eric Byrne would say, okay, we could observe somebody acting from when they're in their parent, and we could see the behaviors that were externally expressed, which, which would denote that they're in their parent ego state, which might be their mother. Yes. And then we can look at them, the child ego state behaviors, which would be directly related to the child behaviors of yesterday. Yes. Five, 15, you know, seven. And we could, we could see those behaviours linked to the internal phenomena. Yeah. Whereas Freud was a model of the unconscious, not linked to behaviours. No. No, no. So it, when we talk about linked to the unconscious, he was saying that this tripartite system was... Um, was that it, so, is it sometimes referred to as the dynamic unconscious? Would that be yeah. right? It's much. It's not linked to behaviours. So... If you, if, you know, you had somebody just, I don't know, talking for 15 minutes, you couldn't, according to his model, Freud, wouldn't be about looking at those behaviours. 
which would correspondingly link to whichever ego state. It would be much more about unconscious drives. Freud never talked about behaviors that would correspond to the rampant drives of the id, for example. He never talked about behaviors that would get linked to the uh, moral authority of the superego. He would talk about the superego in terms of uh, uh, top authority, you know, or beliefs around should, ought, and must, but not link it to a parental interject. No, because there's more of a societal aspect to it as well, isn't there? Yeah, that's the, right. Yeah, the more Freud's idea was more about what 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 societal message is. Yes, so very very different. Not linked to behaviours. Yes. Berg came along and divided a model of personality linked to the behaviours. So you could observe the behaviours of somebody in therapy and you could see the corresponding interject. Hmm. Yeah, so the father, the behaviours of the parental interject would link to the father. Hmm. And you could look at the behaviours of the child corresponding to that age that the person was in. Yeah. So the behaviours of somebody, I don't know, smiling in a passive way, you could link it back to the three years, three year old perhaps who was smiling and distressed in the same passive way. Well, that's not what Freud talked about at all. His was the model of the unconscious. So when, when Freud was interpreting, because that's what, that's what, you know, yes. what, yes. what yeah. he, would, he would, what would he do? He would, he would, he would listen to what someone says and then he would interpret which ego state was present? Is that how it would work? You know, for, let's get it right. Freud, and he taught this in his books, and that is Freud would say, you know, to his analysts, you do not interpret in one 50-minute session more than three times. Oh. So the interpretation has to be linked to no more than three times, maybe to only twice. So it would carry that extra weight. And it was an interpretation of free association. So in other, other words, somebody would be lying on a couch talking about randomly about their dreams or whatever it was, and maybe, you know, might be led that way at the beginning, their dreams, analysis of the dreams, because that's what psychoanalysis started from. And, and then you would have the odd, no more than three interpretations of the, you know, in terms of the transference, the father behind the, the and they would make this interpretation very powerfully in a quite a vague way and quite a symbolic way of what the person is talking about. Mm. So it very much would be around, in transference terms, an authoritative interpretation, usually at a symbolic level, of the person who's, you know, free association randomly on the couch. Yes, and it's fair to say that in those days, and, and I think to be fair to, to modern psycho psycho uh, psycho analysts yeah um they probably don't work so much in this way now and they don't have no. people on couches and not many they don't talk in german accents or wear both eyes and say tell not me many. about your mother no not, um, many. not many but um but i i think that what what you get into is is that they would inter they would they would interpret using symbols because because freud was great, very big on symbols and yeah. and kind of greek Greek yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Greek yeah, that's right. yeah. yeah. And also his idea of sexualized drives, for example. Yes. So the interpretations may be around the sexualized repression of, yes. of the person because he, he, he thought a lot of uh, neurosis came from repressed sexual drives. Yes. Yeah. So you wouldn't have, the emphasis would not be on as Byrne was 50 or 60 years later, about a strengthening in the here and now of, of an adult ego state that you could point to, point to in terms of adult behaviours in the here and now. It would be much more about interpretation, uh, often in a symbolic or way, uh, and to, of the first year, two years, three years of a person's life. And uh, really analysis of their unconscious. Yes. Not not strengthening their behavior, adult in the here and now. Well, I think that's really useful because I think, I think it is a bit snow moment. It's one that I labored under for a long time, Bob, that they were, they were the same, but actually, as you quite eloquently put, 
they're very different and I think that's going to be so much so useful for any students who are being asked to do a compare and contrast or anybody in general who, who wants to see the differences so as always Bob Cook um, thank you very much thank you very much and I think that's the 33rd TA simple video we made the difference between Freud and Burns compare and contrast so it's an interesting one it is and why don't you check the playlist out and you can see all the others we go from the we go from the structural model of parent, adult and child right through the complete history of TA in great mm. depth. So if you're interested in TA or a TA student, you're getting taught from Bob Cook, who's one of the top trainers probably yeah. in the world. There, I'll big you up, Bob, in the world. Very much, Dan. All right. All right, <laughs> lovely. Uh, and uh, thank you to the audience. Bye-bye.